Minecraft may be the most successful game of all time, but Mojang has had several other games that didn't turn out so well. I'm not just talking about the death of Minecraft Story Mode, or the rocky launch of Minecraft Earth, but also the completely abandoned official LEGO Minecraft game, called BrickCraft. BrickCraft was an idea Notch had that took the gameplay mechanics of Minecraft and combined it with the iconic LEGO brick aesthetic. They presented this idea to the LEGO group back in 2011, before Minecraft had even officially released. And amazingly, LEGO approved, so Mojang got straight to work on the development of BrickCraft, or as it was codenamed at the time, Rex Quan Do. Although the project was top secret, we do have these screenshots of the original BrickCraft prototype, but as I'm sure you've guessed by now, the game was never finished. So, what happened then? Was LEGO not impressed with this small indie studio's work? Actually, it was Mojang that decided to back out of the deal. Apparently, the LEGO group had a lot to say about what Mojang was and wasn't allowed to do do with their brand, making it hard for Mojang to have the creative freedom they needed to make a great game. There was even a disagreement as to whether or not the developers were allowed to add tiny scratches to the LEGO bricks in order to make them look more realistic. LEGO said that just couldn't happen. After deciding enough was enough, Notch backed out of the project completely. Some people at LEGO tried to convince the company that they should buy Mojang and continue development of BrickCraft, but this was before Minecraft had become as successful as it is now, and the higher-ups at LEGO just didn't see any point in buying buying a game studio at the time. Apparently, a lot of the plans Mojang had for BrickCraft eventually made their way into Minecraft, and despite it being a failed project, Mojang and LEGO have continued their partnership in a different way, producing Minecraft LEGO sets instead. BrickCraft was basically Minecraft but LEGO, however this next game was pretty much Minecraft but space. Ten to the Sea, as it was pronounced, began development in 2012, and was expected to be the next big project to follow up Minecraft. The plans for it were ambitious, a multiplayer sandbox space simulator, complete with laser guns, space combat, and an actual programmable computer. The story was about astronauts who were supposed to be in deep sleep for just 10 years, but were actually put under for 10 to the sea years, which in hexadecimal is over 281 trillion years. Unlike BrickCraft, there is actually footage of this game that was released during its development. All we can really see here are some multiplayer laser gun battles, a bit of aimless wandering around the ship, and not crashing the in-game computer. Computers. There's also a face builder that was released publicly, which allows us to customize our very own astronaut. The hype that built up around 10 to the Sea was immense. Everyone wanted to play this new game, saying it would be the sequel to Minecraft. Unfortunately, that hype was the very thing that got the game cancelled. Notch was under a lot of pressure to create this big new game, and he was afraid it would never be as good as everyone wanted it to be. Worrying about whether or not this was going to be as good as Minecraft took a lot of the fun out of actually creating a new game, and ultimately, he decided he'd rather work on smaller projects than stress himself out working on this project, which had become way bigger than he intended. With that, 10 to the Sea was officially shelved. We may not be able to play it, but at least we do have a chance to hear it, because since I started talking about this game, I've been playing some of the game's music, which was later released to the public by C418, who, as I'm sure you know, also made Minecraft's original music. Another project Mojang was working on around the time was called Collarsbane. If that name doesn't sound familiar, it's probably because you're more familiar with its original name, Scrolls. This game was unlike anything Mojang had done before. It was a competitive turn-based strategy game, where you had to balance resources and play your cards effectively in order to win. There were four types of cards, creatures, structures, enchantments, and spells. And like any good strategy game, you played on a hexagonal grid. When Scrolls entered a public beta in 20 2013, it actually did pretty well for itself, and would go on to receive several content updates for a few years. But in 2015, Mojang announced they were no longer developing scrolls, because there just weren't enough new people playing it to continue development. Without new people buying the game, there wasn't enough money to pay the developers and run the game servers. So, why did they change the name from scrolls to Collarsbane? Well, this may be due in part to a lawsuit from before the game even entered beta. The company Bethesda didn't like that Mojang was trying to trademark the name Scrolls, as it was way too similar to the name of their game, The Elder Scrolls. Eventually, they did come to an agreement that Mojang could use the name Scrolls as long as they didn't trademark it. After they stopped developing Scrolls, Mojang wanted to release the game for free, so players who cared about it could still play it on community-owned servers. Since they were just putting it all out there for free, I guess they decided it should have a name that they could actually trademark, and they renamed it to Collarsbane. You can still actually play Collarsbane today on a community server, but when I played it, there wasn't anyone else 
online. Maybe you'll have better luck than me. Minecraft Story Mode is another discontinued game you can technically play today, but it's not an easy task, as it's currently impossible to buy it online. Although not developed or published by Mojang themselves, Minecraft Story Mode was the first major Minecraft spin-off game, and despite the idea of a story-driven Minecraft game seeming a bit odd at the time, when it was finally released, people seemed to like it. In fact, Story Mode performed well enough that the developers, Telltale Games, decided to produce DLC, creating a second season with five new episodes to play. The story was interesting, the characters were likable, and having to make choices that change the game's outcome is a lot of fun. But unfortunately, despite Minecraft Story Mode being relatively successful, it would be one of the few games produced by Telltale to actually turn a profit. Most of their games didn't really make them much money, so eventually the studio just couldn't afford to keep running. This meant that all of their games became unavailable to purchase digitally, so you can now only play Minecraft Story Mode if you already owned it, or if you can find a physical disc of it for your console. Although Telltale was eventually bought, it's uncertain whether or not Minecraft Story Mode will ever return, so best of luck if you're trying to score yourself a copy of it to play. But one game you'll never be able to play again is Minecraft Earth. This was Mojang's incredibly ambitious plan to bring Minecraft into the real world. Like in Pokemon Go, players would be able to physically travel around their town or city to interact with the game. You would find and collect rare mobs and building materials, and then actually use those materials to create your own structures by using the phone's camera. It was actually a pretty interesting idea, and lots of people were excited to get their hands on it. Towards the end of 2019, the game entered a public beta, and it was pretty cool. It definitely needed some more content though, so Mojang continued development through 2020. Now as everyone knows, 2020 was a difficult year for the entire world, as we were all hit by the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, meaning people were spending a lot more time indoors to keep themselves in others safe from the virus. This obviously meant that pretty quickly, there really weren't many people who continued to play Minecraft Earth, as it was dependent on them actually going out into the world to collect and build. As the pandemic showed no signs of stopping and player counts dwindled further and further, there was eventually no choice but to stop development. In January of 2021, Mojang announced that they were no longer going to be updating Minecraft Earth, and all of the servers that made the game's real-world mechanics work would shut down later that year. This game not only created an exciting new way for players to show off their Minecraft builds, but also introduced us to some of the coolest new mobs that we've seen in a Minecraft game since. There have been several attempts by people in the community at recreating Minecraft Earth, but Mojang has shut them all down. Perhaps this is a sign that one day, they might just bring it back, and we'll all finally get a chance to go outside and build in the real world again. And that just about wraps up this dive into the history of Mojang's failed, forgotten, and cancelled projects. Let me know your thoughts about these games down in the comments below below, and be sure to subscribe if you liked the video. With all that being said, I will see you in the next one.